simple living typically focuses on stuff and how simply something functions in your home. Concentrating on how something works in your home rather than concentrating on how many things you own shifts the focus to simplicity. I'm a little biased, but life before simple living was harder. However, carving a path to actually get there wasn't necessarily easy. In this video, I am going to shine a light on one day that happened three and a half years ago that changed my life and put me on a path to living simply. I'm also going to share with you 15 benefits that have improved my life since that one day. Hi, I'm Erica Lucas and I share videos about slow and simple living and the day I want to share with you happened in November of 2019. I was filming like seven days a week and sharing videos three days a week on YouTube back then and I am glad for it today because now I can expand on the ways that that one day did in fact change my life now three and a half years later. So let's take a look back together. And I'm back in the basement because I left the basement uncomfortable with my progress. I didn't feel like I'd made progress, even though I'd accomplished those two things, which are goals for the basement, me having an office, and a centralized area for homeschool materials that, you know, that's part of the mission of, of reforming this basement. I decided to recalibrate because my approach to the basement is not getting it done. <laughs> I consulted back to my library books about minimal minimalism and revisited Francine J. The Joy of Less. Decluttering is infinitely easier when you think of it as deciding what to keep rather than deciding what to throw away. Or in my case, donate or throw away. I kind of just sat with that for a little while and this morning I revisited it again and put Francine J's words into my own words made myself a little card <laughs> to reference while I'm down here in the basement to get it done and I, my words were decide what to keep ask why and let go of the rest so letting go of the rest means throwing it away or donating it. But the first step was deciding what to keep. I was thinking about it as deciding what to donate. I had on these glasses that were looking at the basement with with eyes of what, what do I want to get rid of? What should I get rid of? What should I donate? What should I trash? Or I look at it now and I'm like, there's not a whole lot I would keep from this pile. So when I look at it that way, I am so ready to turn this room to what it should be. That was a weird movement. It was once a beautiful playroom <laughs> when the kids were, uh, you know, when we first moved in, it was a gorgeous playroom and they had so much fun down here. Um, they just, they had designated play areas for everything and it was really lovely. And when I look at it now with these renewed eyes, I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna need more boxes. <laughs> okay. I just realized that I need to do it before. That's the start of my donation box. Those are all empty baskets. Those are the boxes for storage. We got half through. All right. I struggled making decluttering decisions for months on and off camera back then. That particular day, I decided to try reverse decluttering after reading her book. With reverse decluttering, you decide what you wanna keep first, and then you evaluate everything else for decluttering, for donation, for trash, for selling, for giving away. After that day, it was like I stepped on the gas. I finally saw a path in front of me and it lit up like an airport runway. I knew what I had to do to make my life simpler. I began tackling every room in our house, every category, every pile with a lens of simplicity. What did I actually want to own? What was worth it to me to continue to keep track of, to clean, to manage every single day? And now 
here today having used the reverse decluttering method for years. I have donated, trashed, sold, repurposed thousands and thousands of things. If you feel overwhelmed by stuff in your home, if you cannot find things you know you own, if you organize a space in your house but it doesn't stay organized, or if you spend more time tidying and cleaning stuff up than actually cleaning and disinfecting, then simplifying your home could lead to one of the 15 benefits that the video is gonna map out for you next. Living simply might include decluttering items out of your house so that you just have less stuff while simultaneously reducing the things that you bring into your home by changing your shopping habits. There are many benefits of living simply, but here are 15 that have made the efforts of decluttering and reorganizing worth it since that day I started reverse decluttering. Number one, it's easier to clean and disinfect the entire house. Less stuff means less to tidy, less to organize, less to move around, so you can actually dust and wipe surfaces, so you can run the vacuum without having to spend 20 minutes cleaning up. Number two, simple living can reduce stress caused by clutter and disorganization. And even after reading dozens of books about decluttering, plus watching other minimalists on YouTube, I still felt unable to start decluttering. I struggled. I had felt overwhelmed in my own home to the point of paralysis. The stress dominated. It was too much to do, so I did nothing. And it's one of the reasons that I began decluttering in the first place, and I wanted to live with less, but I didn't know how. Simple living does not eliminate the stress, but it does lessen it. Number three, living with less can reduce the anxiety of being unable to find items in your house that you know you own. Number four, you begin to identify items that have value. And then you find strength in getting rid of what is now clutter to you. In today's world, clutter shows up in many different ways. It's stuff that's on your shelf that you didn't, that you don't want to own. It's digital clutter in your phone and in your email. It's visual clutter on your kitchen counter. It's mental clutter as you think about all the things that you need to get done. We lead busy lives in this day and age, and it can feel like we're always coming or going. Starting to notice the little bits of your life that feel extra or feel complicated can help you simplify your life. Number five, simple living can lead from a shift from disposable items to reusable items. I have slowly made a swap like this over the years, one swap at a time, finding things that work for me and my family for deodorant, food storage, laundry detergent, dish soap, hand soap, body soap, cleaning products. Each time I go to use something, I question if there is a way I can uh, have it be a reusable item, if I can use less chemicals, it leads to a, a thought process of sustainability. Number six, gain control of organization in your home. It is hard to organize too much stuff. If you have ever organized and then the system you tried didn't stick, reducing the number of items that you're trying to organize would help. Toys is one of those categories in many of our homes that gets out of control after the holidays and after birthdays. I have left a blog post link below in the description box for how we organize toys for anybody who's interested. We got rid of a lot of toys. We decluttered and donated a lot of toys that they simply didn't play with that we were carrying and cleaning and taking care of, but they didn't even play with them. Number seven, feeling less overwhelmed in your home because you can simply manage it better. A small example for me is how we manage towels. Each person in our home has a towel and a designated hook in the bathroom. Towels get washed and dried every week and they go back onto the hook. No more folding, no more extra towel inventory for me to keep track of in the, in the linen closet. I do have a guest basket with extra towels, extra washcloths, and, and fresh soaps. I used to rotate towels or I would just simply not wash them as often because I had other towels in my closet as backup. I don't have that backup now. I have simplified a weekly laundry routine that includes my towels and I just removed steps of taking care of my towels. I have simplified it. I've made it easier to manage. Number eight, simple living can add free time to your day. I remember the first time I realized I had extra time in my day after decluttering and living simply. I was literally walking around 
on my main floor in circles looking for something to do. I had to stop myself, force myself to sit on the couch and do nothing. I had to actually lean into the moment and it was uncomfortable. Having free time, having the ability to go slowly through life, at least slower than I used to go through it, um, it, it just, it took some getting used to. And shifting into simply living may mean fewer activities and commitments for you. You feel less busy because you are less busy. Number nine, owning less means less to organize. Just like number one, the whole house is easier to clean and less stuff to deal with means there's less stuff to clean. Less furniture, less toys, less towels, less coats, less shoes. Another example would be the organization in the kitchen cabinets that we have. Most of our kitchen cabinets have open space and that took years to curate, to practice and to get it right. Less stuff means less to organize. It means it's easier to put stuff away in the kitchen and then get stuff out. Each time I put items away, I take a moment to make sure that that cabinet is still 50 to 75% full. When it gets to be a little crowded, I move some things around in my kitchen and I really question whether or not I need everything anymore. Number 10, life begins to feel more purposeful and intentional. Naming what matters most to you and then making those things where you spend your time and where you spend your money, it leaves less time for the things that don't matter to you. Number 11, your relationship with money changes. I actually wanna share with you a video from Connie Riott where she spoke about her relationship with money and how it's changed with minimalism. She has more than a million views on this video. It's a really fantastic message. So I'm gonna leave a link for that video in the description box below for you. Number 12, learning to want fewer items is different than decluttering for the sake of decluttering. When you change how you feel about stuff, you change how much you own. Wanting fewer items means you want to own less. Number 13, feel more comfortable inviting friends over. Maybe this should, well, it should be number one, but before Simple Living, I did not invite friends and family over. I was so embarrassed, I just couldn't, I didn't do it. Now I love having people over and I don't spend any time tidying and cleaning in advance. My home is what it is and it is simplified and it's great for us. I don't need to clear a kitchen counter because a friend's coming over. I am very comfortable now in the way my home is and I love having people over. Number 14, with less stuff to worry about and less stuff to keep track of, your sleep improves. You are less stressed. You are less triggered by mess and clutter. Rest comes easier. Number 15, you can improve family relationships because you're eliminating the things that kept you from spending time together. This one may be specific to me, but we used to not play board games as much as we do now because the table was never clear and I could not find the game that the kids were asking for. I didn't know where it was. And we, we can spend time together now without the clutter preventing that from happening. Living with fewer things means you have to get rid of things. Decluttering may feel hard or even very hard for some of us, especially the sentimental items, the gifts, the things we spent money on but we don't use. Guilt is hard to process when letting go of items. A simple life may feel hard to earn if you start with too many belongings, but the effort is worth it after you've decluttered, prioritized, and reorganized your home through this lens of simplicity. Simple living typically focuses on reducing the number of things you own and simplifying how you live your life. Those many advantages that I talked about in this video make the effort worth it one day at a time. Thank you for sharing part of your day with me today. If you want some ideas on how to start Simple Living, watch these 23 ideas for 2023 video next. And if you wanna see what a day in the life looks like for us, here's a link for that video. Thinking about making a new one of those, maybe a spring day in the life. Let me know if that's something you wanna see. Give me a comment below and I'll see you in the next video.